I'm gonna give you one task in this video. It's not to say why my shirt says daddy. It's to tell me why this footage that I rendered looks fake. Look at it for a second, really take it in. It looks fake because it looks like I just have a camera swiveling around a 3D spherical environment. If that's what you said, you're correct. What's something we can do to make this instantly more realistic? Here we go. This is a second render I did. You can see something about it looks a bit different. And what I added is EV compensation, or maybe a different word for that is metering, the way we're gonna do it. Basically what it means is the exposure changes depending on what we are looking at. So if we're looking at the outside, which is very brightly exposed, I wanna lower the exposure. If I'm looking at the inside where it's very, you know, very dark compared to the outside, right? There's shadows and shit like that. Uh, then I want to raise the exposure and I want this to be dynamic. This is not something Blender does inherently, uh, but we could add a couple nodes to add this super quickly, add realism to your renders, and this is pretty automated, right? It will handle uh, the EV compensation for you. So uh, here is how we do that. Um, so again, basic scene, doesn't really matter. I have a 3D sphere, an HDRI, and a camera that you can see is rotating everywhere. So if I look through it, you can see what's going on. Um, key insight is this HDRI has outside elements that you can see are blown out and inside elements. For the outside elements, if I was to go to my exposure settings and bring that down, you can see all of a sudden we can actually see what's going on. It's exposed. Uh, for the opposite, for the inside, you can see now only the darkest parts of the image are exposed. So we want to somehow control this slider automatically, but you can see the only way we could really do that is with keyframes, and I don't want to do that. What if I change my camera animation? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, once you're set up with your render, whether it be an HDRI or you're moving through a physical environment, this works with any render, um, we are ready to go. So once you've set this up, I'm just going to hit render. You can see I've just rendered a frame without any exposure compensation. Here's how we add it. Go to compositing. Let's go to full screen as well, which I don't have a, a shortcut for for some reason. There we go. Uh, go into compositing and you're going to see the basic node network if you don't have this enable, en enabled, uh, enable use nodes. Uh, we have the render layer, what we rendered being fed into what is being outputted, the composite and the viewer, right? Nothing fancy. To change the exposure of this render before it receives uh, over here, uh, all we need to do is add a exposure node. What this exposure node lets us do is basically control the exact same setting as the um, exposure over here in the color management, right? Um, so when I make this very low, you can see only the outside is exposed. When it's very high, the opposite, right? And we need some kind of function that tells us what to put in this for every single frame. Now, the way we do this in real life when we film with a camera, it's something called metering. Usually, we look at the very center of the image and say whatever we're pointing at, in other words, whatever is directly in the middle, like a video game, this is what we want to sample and calculate the exposure for. Well, how do we kind of calculate this area right here? How do we do that? Well, here's a, a very simple way to think about it. If you take your image and you scale it, so I'm just going to, let's make this a single number that controls both X and Y. If I uh, scale it and we view that, you can see we're just zooming into the middle here. It, I, I don't really see how that's like any different than just, you know, picking the middle, right? I'm just zooming in. And the nice thing about this is you could actually pick how zoomed in you want. Do you want it to literally tell me what pixel is like in the middle? Then, you know, go to a big number. If you want to sample kind of a rectangle um, in your footage, then don't go as high. So you can actually control your metering. Basically, this is my sample of the original image, and I want to say, tell me how bright it is. To do that, use a levels node, which is kind of the key insight in compositing. We have this levels node. What it tells us is we can figure out the mean or the average luminance. So you could see this is a very bright, you could see it's basically outputting white. Um, it's a very bright uh, luminance, which makes sense. This is a very bright thing. If I was to zoom out a bit and get a, you know more darker pixels, you could see this mean goes down. So here is before. Well, <laughs> let me try that again. Here's before and after. So you could see that the exposure is compensating. In fact, if you want to figure out the exact exposure amount, and I'll just speed through this so I can get to the part where we, where we actually adjust it. As you can see, where is this mean greater than some number? We just keep raising it. It goes above exposure 1, in fact. And then it goes all the way up to 1.4 something. So that's the exposure. Um, the weird thing about luminance, though, is you're wondering, oh, how high can this number be? It's not 0 to 1. And in fact, different programs use different calculations for luminance. It's not just the, uh, 
you know, Euclidean Pythagorean theorem distance of like the R, G, and B values. There's weird formulas for it. But in my experience, you're, us you're usually dealing with exposures between, for the mean, or luminances between like 0 and 1.6-ish, maybe. I mean, I haven't tried, bl tried uh, blowing it out. Uh, so what we can do is use that information. So what I want to do is I'm going to send this through a map range node. I'm going to take the mean, again, telling us what is the luminance of our sample. We want to say, take inputs between 0 and 1.6. You can experiment with it. And we want to send it to two values that are going to alter our exposure. Now, maybe your first instinct is to say, OK, we need sometimes. Sometimes the exposure should be negative, and sometimes it should be positive. So maybe your instinct would be like, I don't know, negative 3 to 3. There's a big issue with this. Let's see. If I connect this, you can see it's actually blowing out our image. In this case, it doesn't make sense, right? Because our center right here, the thing we are sampling is actually a bright part of the image. So when it's sampling a large luminance, we want the exposure to go down. So it's kind of like an inverse relationship. In fact, we're making it doubly as bright. We're saying this area is bright, make it brighter. So first thing you need to fix is instead of like negative three to three, negative two to two, whatever, you want to flip that. You want it to be three to negative three. That way, when we are exposed, um, you know, when we're sampling or metering a bright section, we're going darker. And for the opposite, we're going brighter. Now, as for how bright kind of the, the ranges of your EV compensation are, that's up to you. Uh, without going nuts, I would recommend just kind of going from the same number, 1.6. So maybe 1.6 to negative 1.6. But you could uh, do whatever you want here. So you can see here is the before and the after. Well, how do we know this is working? Well, let's go to a different frame where we're not sampled right on the middle. In fact, a good way to see that is you go to your camera, you go to camera viewport display, yeah, composition guides, and then you um, enable the center. And it's kind of faint, but you can see now we have this uh, plus sign that tells us exactly where we're sampling. So I'm just going to go to a frame where right here, we're, we're clearly sampling on a darker part of it. So now let's render. And let's see what that did in compositing. In compositing, we've now sampled this, which still has some of the brightness, and we can actually zoom in a bit more if you want to get rid of that. You can see the mean is a bit darker um, over here, um, and therefore we're probably going to get a bit of a negative exposure hit. So here's the original image, and here's our exposed version. And when you render this for every single thing, because again, this node network is completely procedural in the sense of it's doing the calculation for every frame on the fly uh, you can see these are the kinds of results we get again this works with the you know putting it in a spherical environment but it also works with any kind of render that you're doing and i'm working on one that i want to be very photorealistic so i want to add the autofocus the metering the ev compensation everything uh, so this is a cool little tip and by the way yes there are add-ons to do this uh, but why pay for one when you can do it for free using this little node trick, they're, they're not going to tell you that. Although with some of these add-ons, you can meter in different ways, not just the center pixel, but maybe you want to sample nine regions um, on different corners of the frame, which you can also set up in compositing. Either way, uh, we've been going for a hot minute now, so let me just do my outro. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something about EV compensation and metering. I haven't seen a single tutorial about this. I'm just going to assume I invented this knowledge. Why not? Um, if you want to see more stuff like this and you want to support this channel and CG Matter, there is a Patreon link in the description. Why should you join my army of boys? three reasons. One, early access to tutorials. You could have seen this video and a lot of videos I upload early, sometimes a day early, sometimes earlier, assuming there's no sponsorship deadline stuff. Second of all, blend files. You don't need to make everything that I make from scratch. Uh, usually I upload the blend directly and you could just play around with the finished project. Um, at this point, there are hundreds of blends. Okay, I've been at it for three years. And finally, and maybe most valuably to you, um, exclusive tutorials. Every once in a while, I publish a tutorial that is not available for free. Not often, because I like to keep things available for free. That's the uh, the the market. That's the the thing. The model I'm trying to use. Uh, but I have recorded a couple exclusive tutorials. You can get access to every single one I've recorded and more in the future. I'm working on a project right now that once I release it, I want to do a long uh, tutorial exclusive about maybe how I made it. So. That's the thing. Uh, but if you, want, if you want any of those benefits or you just want to support this channel and the CG Matter channel, that is the way to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something about exposure and metering. And I will see you, you know, whenever you click another one of my videos. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.